Good morning and welcome to my hobby table yet again. And I've got a mystery box here. But before we dig into this mystery box, I just want to say that I just want to say that 2024, I've been so blessed this year and in many, many ways. But with regards to my channel, I have met some in person, others just through email, some very, very nice new friends that have con done some contributions to this channel that have just been outstanding. I've had people uh, loan me engines for uh, making videos. I've had many people give me engines, donations to the channel, and donations of other things, uh, money, and other items. It's just been a wonderful year, and I'm very blessed, and I want to thank all of you those who have not even contributed because just by clicking on my videos you're contributing so i just want to say thank you to everybody for all that you've done for me in this channel and contributed this year um, i couldn't do all this without you so with that being said here's another mystery box engine now this is a a box that a, a wonderful gentleman named kirk uh, he's been emailing me back and forth he saw my super tiger g90 video and this is the end result of it now. Now he sent me this box. It's quite weighty. It's you know, not all that big, but it has some weight to it. So let's just open this up and see what we've got in this box. Because there's a lot of stuff in here. First thing is a nice Hobbyco exhaust deflector. Pretty large diameter one. So hmm, I wonder what that can be used for. Uh, look at this. This looks familiar. This looks like a... An adapter for an in-cal muffler, just like I had for that Super Tiger G90 engine. Just doing this stuff one at a time. I don't. I've never touched any of these things, so I don't know. You know the order I'm bringing things out. This is clearly an OS engine or an OS exhaust. For an OS, it's an OS 704 exhaust. So this is obviously an older engine from an older engine that had the strap-on muffler. Can't wait to see where that goes on. What is this? I bet you this is a carburetor of some sort. And it is. This is, it appears to be an OS carb. It is a 72, OS 72. Boy, I'm not familiar with that. Not familiar with that carb. Uh, I wonder if I should just go ahead and zoom in a bit more here. Not too familiar with that carb. This shape here is unfamiliar to me. This style needle high-speed needle is indicative of the 70s and it's got a throttle stop screw or at least a barrel retention screw however you want to put it that's a barrel retention screw I believe it's not an air bleed carb twin needle carb that's an interesting I wonder if it goes with this we will find out um, what's next here this box was professionally packed I can tell you that because with the amount of things that are in here, it's like a puzzle piece. Well, what do we have here? We have a Super Tiger G90 engine. Now this is what Kirk told me he was sending me. And when we, he first was telling me this, he's like, he's just going to send me this engine. And then all of a sudden it turned into this whole box of engines. Now this, he told me, is going to need to be rebuilt, repaired, bearings replaced. Oh, man. It just feels notchy to me. I mean, those bearings may not necessarily have to come out. Boy, that thing's got some. So, so here's a Super Tiger G90 that has really, really good compression. Hear that? Mm. I'm trying to stick my head in here. Yes, ringed engine. Um, you know, I don't know. This would be one of those ones where I just start with heating it up and oiling it and seeing so this is this box here alone is going to be able to give me uh material for at least two or three probably look inside videos in addition to this particular video so that's that's cool that's awesome i love that uh, let's see let's do this thing here next which probably is a carb and it's a super tiger carb more than likely, it is the one for this engine. Yep, it fits this engine. So here we got another awesome Super Tiger Mark V carb. What do we 
have here? We've got probably another carb. Wow, look at this one. That looks like another Super Tiger carb. It's a little tight. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, that one needs, I don't want to mess with that one too much. It needs work. This was moving, but the barrel wasn't. So this carb is going to need some work. But let's see here, just for the heck of it, is it the same size? Is it another large bore? Yes. Okay, so cool. We got, I know it doesn't go that way, got another carb here for a larger Super Tiger engine. So that's awesome. Uh, let's see what we have. Ooh, we got a rogue bearing. What is that? That's a. Uh, Trying to read the numbers on this bearing. It's a uh, 8095, maybe. Look kind of like an R6 front bearing. 8095, Z8095 front bearing for something. What's this? Oop, we got more bearings here. Okay, so we got bearings here. Wow, we got some rather large, brand new bearings. Throw that paper over there. That's a, I've seen these bearings before too. I can't remember if that's a 16,003. Those are really nice bearings. I'm not sure what those bearings are for at this point. They're probably for that Super Tiger engine. Uh, let's see, what is this here? Got a prop. Oh, I think I remember this. He said this was a diesel engine. Look at this. You know what? And it was funny because I actually still have um, some diesel fuel that I made several years ago and I stored it in a couple of Davis diesel fuel cans that are, you know, theoretically are resealable. Hopefully that fuel is any good, is still good because I don't really want to try and find ether again and all that, but Assuming we have a needle valve, um, this should be a runner. I'm trying to identify, I don't really know a whole lot about, it says DA. I don't really have any idea what this diesel is, uh, other than it says DA on it. It's got a 9.6 prop on it. That should be fun. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to have a needle valve and hopefully there is a needle valve in here somewhere. I did not see one in any of this packaging. But you never know, maybe it was in there and maybe it's laying around here someplace. So that's super cool. I've been thinking about diesels again, running them, but you know I didn't have fuel in the house, so I didn't have an engine. But this one looks like it would be a runner because it's got you know what I consider to be good compression. Here. Well, I hope I didn't lose that needle valve for that. Oh, I did. Here it is. There it is. See, this is why you just have to sometimes be really, really, really bent. It's bent pretty, pretty bad. So you can see how bent that needle valve is. Hopefully it'll still thread in here. Looks like it's bent at the part that doesn't really go into the... Let's see. I can probably... Where is that bend at? The bend looks like it's... Right about here. I can probably very gently bend that back and straighten that out. It does thread in here. Whether it completely seals or not. I don't know. I don't have a piece of fuel tubing. Actually, I'm lying. I do have a piece of fuel tubing. Let's just do that real quick here. Let me take a second.
Feels like it closes off the, the venturi or close enough to being still runnable. That's very cool. All right, let's see what this one is here. Well, I'm glad I decided to look back in that wrapping. Look at this. Now this is an engine he told me about, so not all of these are surprises to me. This is Super Tiger G40. And the reason Kirk sent this to me is because he, uh, he mentioned a G40 and I happened to say, you know what? I had a G40, I think a Super Tiger G40 was maybe my second engine ever that I bought and I had it on a Goldberg Eagle II back in 1989. Um, at that time, I didn't know much about glow engines obviously because I was just getting into the hobby, didn't know how to tune them. And I was not able to really ever get the, that engine running too well. Even the club president, um, who was an expert, was having difficulty getting that engine tuned. I did fly that plane with the engine, but I don't think I ever got it tuned very well. So it'll be interesting to see. I think he said he did not have an exhaust for this. Um, and a larger exhaust isn't going to work. I'm going to have to try and do some searching. Um, searching eBay and see if I can come up with an exhaust for this because I'd really love to run this engine but I just don't have an exhaust for that right now. That's a nice looking engine. Very nice looking engine. It doesn't look like it's got a whole lot of run time on it. Well, yeah, side of the pistons carameled up pretty good. Let's see what else we have in here. Let's see what this is. Hopefully this is a carb for that. I don't think it is though. It's a Super Tiger carb. Yeah, it is. All right, so damn, that's cool. These carbs won't fit in there, will they? No, I didn't think so. All right, so this is awesome. Got the carb for this G40 also. Now I just have to try to source a header or adapter in the exhaust for this. Maybe my buddy Harvey's got, got one for a Super Tiger G40. That would be cool. Let's see, what's this one here? Another Super Tiger G61. There we go. Super Tiger G61. Now, fortunately, because um, the deal I made with uh, the trade deal I got from Mike with the G90, it came with two exhausts. So, obviously, I've got plenty of exhaust to run with this. Uh, looking at the crank shaft in there. It doesn't look like this has got a heck of a lot of runtime on it. Now this doesn't say made in Italy. This G40 also does not say made in Italy. In fact, it says China right back there. So that's a newer G40. This, I don't understand at all. Maybe it was uh, set up for a pump, but that should not be an open line there. If you have an open line in the crankcase, then you're not gonna draw, you're not gonna have a vacuum. It feels like it might be plugged, but let's see. And even this um, G90 is China. So these look like all Chinese made Super Tigers. So that's interesting to compare with. Okay, here we go. Last engine. Look at this. This is what those uh, exhaust and carb came with. This is an OS Max 60. Max H60. I have to go look on my timeline to see uh, when this engine came out. It's locked up. That shouldn't be a big deal though. It should just be a matter of. Heating that up and flipping it over. Now I think Floyd said he didn't send the screws to retain this. However, they might be um, universal with some other screws on another OS engine that I have. So it might not be a big deal. It might be a while before I get to this engine. But this would be a... I think I had one of these on the channel before. I don't know. This is awesome though. I mean... Let me move that box out of the way. Let me show you what 
all was included in this box. We've got bearings. I know these bearings are for probably this Super Tiger here. So we've got, can I get all of this in here? Got three Super Tiger engines, a set of bearings, a diesel engine, and an OS, older 70s vintage OS engine. So what a haul that is. So Kirk, thank you very much for your generosity and your support for this channel. I mean, this is just phenomenal. And I know that the window for running engines is closing, but at least maybe I can do some inside looks to disassemble some of these things over the cooler months and it still at least make some engine videos. So again, thank you very much Kirk for this. And uh, thank you all for watching and your continued support and views of my channel.